Hey guys, Sean here from Tesla Family. I now have Tesla solar panels on my roof and Tesla Powerwall in my garage. Combined with my Tesla Model 3, I love that I have a mini, clean, sustainable energy ecosystem here now. In this video, I want to share my Tesla Powerwall's day one performance numbers using some video and snapshots from my Tesla Home Energy Gateway app. Let's jump in. guys before we get a little further into the video I wanted to let you know that if you're looking for more information on my Tesla solar panel system I have my awesome first year Tesla solar review video in my top five make sure to click the link above to check out that video and I also want to share with you my Tesla referral powerwall installation video so you can see the behind the scenes of how my Tesla powerwall was installed all right here we go day one with the new powerwall added on to my solar panel system from Tesla you can see here that we're generating some great solar in the panels. Uh, it's a beautifully sunny day, although we are having a few passing clouds, and every time we have a passing cloud over the panels, it creates a little shadow on the panels, and you can see our power knocked down to around one to two kilowatts, but it does uh, come right up to six kilowatts when we've got the full sun on the panels. We were able to charge up to 100% by midday, with the excess solar that wasn't used by my home. And now that power wall is full, we're pushing excess solar in back into the grid, generating credits that we can be using later on in the year, perhaps on a day where it's extremely cloudy and we use up the entire power wall. We could also use those credits later on in the fall if there's some sort of severe storm that moves through and knocks out power for several days, uh, maybe in the winter time, when a heavy snowstorm comes in and covers a panel for several days, if that happens and we're not able to charge power wall back up due to the lack of sun exposure on the panels, then we'll have to tap back into grid power. If we don't end up using the grid credits, then my power company will pay me back in the springtime on my annual excess generation payout day. Check out the link above to see my excess generation payout from 2020 into 2021. All right, let's get into my Tesla Powerwall day one performance. I have a 7.56 kilowatt Tesla solar panel system with a single 13.5 kilowatt hour Powerwall. On the left hand image here, we can see my impact screen. And then on the right hand image is my solar generation screen. And I'm excited to really share with you guys that for my day one, Tesla Powerwall performance, I was able to be 100% self-powered at my home. That means using zero energy from the grid, which is super cool. You can only do that if you have solar panels and Powerwall battery with it. So my day one performance did occur back on September 30th, just getting around to doing the video now. Pretty sunny day overall. We can see I generated 33.9 kilowatt hours of solar. My home usage was 11.1 kilowatt hours, and there was no charging of my Tesla Model 3 on this day. That makes my solar offset 304%. I generated three times more energy from the sun than my home needed for the entire day. Super awesome. So where did the energy come from in order to be 100% self-powered? Well, 63% of the energy to power my home came from solar, and 37% came from Powerwall, which powered my home when the sun wasn't out. Looking over at the solar regeneration image on the right, this is from my Tesla app. Seven kilowatt hours of my solar generated for the day went to powering my home. That's 21% of the entirety of the solar generated. 12.6 kilowatt hours went to charging my power wall. That's 37% of the total share of solar generated. And 14.4 kilowatt hours of my solar went back into the grid. So the way that the Tesla Gateway handles this, when your home is producing solar, first priority goes to powering your home. Any excess then goes to charging your power wall. And then any excess beyond that, or after your power wall is completely full, goes back into the grid if you have net metering. 
and that's what happened here on the screen. You can see my solar production curve. The green was the solar energy that went into my power wall. The blue was the solar energy that went into my home, and the gray was the solar energy that went back into the grid. Okay, moving on. I've got two more snapshots from the Tesla app for you. The home usage snapshot on the left and net grid use on the right. So looking at the home usage screen, green is where my home was powered by Powerwall. Yellow is where my home was powered by solar. In the net grid use screen, you can see that yellow is where I was pushing the solar energy back into the grid. So with my home being 100% self-powered, its energy came from solar and power wall on the day. Seven kilowatt hours, we already said, came from solar. And then 4.1 kilowatt hours of energy came from my power wall battery. And that's how we achieved the 11.1 for the day. Looking over on the right hand snapshot, zero energy came from the grid, <laughs> but 14.4 kilowatt hours was pushed to the grid. And those are net metering credits that I can use later on in the year if needed. So my net grid usage on the day was minus 14.4 kilowatt hours. All right, now I'm showing you snapshots of my Powerwall Discharge Tesla app screen on the left and my settings screen for my Powerwall on the right. Look at the Powerwall Discharge screen. Starting off here at the top, we can see blue here is where my power wall battery discharged energy to my home early in the morning before the sun came up. Sun comes up and charges my power wall. You can see a nice inverse solar production curve where the solar energy is being pushed into my battery. And then that corresponds really well with the power wall charge level down here on the bottom. There is a blank area from the time that my power wall was fully charged. We can see where my Powerwall was in standby for a couple hours right around noon to maybe 4 p.m. So blank here on the top and then we can see that once the sun started to go back down that power wall started to power my home again here in the blue. You can see that reflected again really well down below. So I started the day, the previous day here was my installation day. Since installation was completed in the afternoon we were only able to charge power wall up to around 30% or so. We can see that we started the day around 25% while it was while a power wall was powering my home. We dipped down to around 10%. Then a pretty sharp rise here while we charge. We charge at around 5 kilowatts to get power wall back up to 100%. And then once the sun goes down again, the power wall charge level shows a very gradual discharge of the battery from 100% down to, uh, I'd say around 80% here. Looking at the settings screen, I wanted to share with you guys that for day one, I did have my backup reserve set to 10%. So 10% of my power wall is reserved for a potential grid outage on the day, which we didn't have one. And I allowed 90% of the power wall to be used to self power my home. I set the control mode to self powered, meaning that power wall can optimize for energy independence or cost savings. So here on day one, we had complete energy independence from the grid. You can change the setting here for the set backup reserve and make sure to uh, subscribe to my channel here if you really like this information because my next couple of videos will be talking about how I've changed this backup reserve and how that impacts my overall solar and power wall performance over particular periods of time. Back to the chart here on the right. I calculated the money that I saved on my day one with adding Powerwall to my solar system. And that's around $2.52. Uh, you know, it's not a huge amount, maybe a cheap cup of coffee, but that's $2.52 that I didn't have to pay the electric utility. And I calculated around 22.7 cents per kilowatt hour, which actually was surprising. I haven't paid the utility company since I had my solar panels installed more than... 16 months ago uh, so I was really surprised to see what the cost of electricity is now and it's also important to let you guys know and it was a sunny day and I wanted to let you know the average sunrise to sunset sky cover on the day was only 20 percent so 80 percent of the day full sunshine that's how I was able to achieve that th over 300 percent solar offset 
And total lifetime energy discharged, obviously this is just day one, so we're going to have a lifetime discharge of 4.1 kilowatt hours, but it'll be interesting to track that, and I'll put videos up throughout the year and over the next couple of years, and we'll see how much my power wall will be discharging through its lifetime. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this informational video on my Tesla Powerwall day one performance. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below. Again, hit that subscribe button. And you'll be notified when my next couple videos are coming out. I do have a first month video coming up relatively soon. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to Tesla Family Channel here on YouTube. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and everyone who watches our videos. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'll get back to you soon. Check out all of our other videos as well. Also, follow us on Twitter at Tesla Family Chan. Use my referral code to buy Tesla solar roof or solar panels. You'll get a reward after system activation.